for this video I'm at JD's shop and we're comparing dual shield flux core vertical uphill to 7018 1 8 stick rods vertical uphill. And so here's the plan for this video. We'll compare the speed of dual shield to 7018 1 8 show some arc shots of the 7018 going uphill, arc shots of dual shield going uphill, and then increase the wire feed speed on the dual shield a lot, do a vertical uphill with that, and then cut and etch tests of everything. And so to lay the groundwork, let's first do a quick review of the last video that I did using this ESOB Rebel 285, where I compared dual shield flux cord to short circuit MIG going uphill. And because of the manipulation that you need to do on short circuit MIG just to help the puddle lay down flat, like this is the, my method for going uphill on short circuit MIG to keep the bead from crowning up too much, it just slows travel speed down, whereas a dual shield just travels in a straight line pretty much and deposits more metal. So that was the first video, and the cut and etch test revealed some satisfactory joints. They could have gotten in there a little bit farther in the root of the joint, but they are adequate. So now we're going to compare dual shield with some different settings to 7018 stick rod. And of course we know it's going to be much faster just because the dual shield is a semi-automatic process. You don't have to stop and change rods, but I think it'd be interesting to see just exactly how much faster dual shield is than 7018 1.8 stick going vertical uphill. So these are some all around settings that JD uses. He mostly welds on 3 16ths to 3 8 steel, sometimes a good bit thicker, but all positions, not just flat or horizontal. Those are the settings we're going to compare to start with. And so JD will be on one T-joint using those settings, and I'll be on another T-joint using 7018 1.8 at 115 amps. Now this machine has a feature called Hot Start that lets you have a few more amps when you first start the rod, and I found that to be pretty beneficial. I just kind of had to do some trial and error and settled on, uh, I think I settled on 30% on the Hot Start and 33% on the Arc Force. And then I experimented a little bit later, dropping the arc force down, and it kind of smoothed out a little bit, but I didn't get to show that in the video. So that's what we're, where we're at, 115 amps, and here we go. We'll be using nice, fresh 7018 rods in a rod oven, a rod caddy like this, and they're kept at over 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Low hydrogen rods either need to be out of a rod caddy or fresh out of the box. There are limitations on how long you can leave them out to where they're not low hydrogen anymore. We'll go over that in another video. But I've got this sped up a whole lot just to show the difference and how much ground JD is gaining on me here while I'm stopping to change rods, stopping to adjust my helmet. A little bit later on, I have to stop and, and adjust the, the ground clamp because I got so much arc blow, and then I had to even lower the amperage to about 105 just to handle the last inch or two. I guess that's a topic for a whole other video is arc blow, moving the ground around, and how to avoid it, but we didn't get to film any of that today. So, you know, the dual shield only took 2 minutes and 19 seconds for him to get from bottom to top to run about probably 15 inches. It took 5 and a half minutes for the 7018 1/8. I like to run 7018s fairly hot, but on a vertical joint like this that's fairly small, you almost always get some arc blow at the top. First rod, second rod ran okay, and right there it got all squirrely on me and I really had to pack it in there to keep from undercutting. Whereas the dual shield, just, just as smooth from start to finish, for some reason didn't experience any, any arc blow or any difference. All right, let's take a look now at some arc shots of both the dual shield and the 7018, and then some restarts on the 7018 using the hot start feature. One of the biggest benefits of dual shield flux core is not having to manipulate the torch or the electrode to go vertical uphill, and it will still punch in there and still lay down nice and flat without having too much convexity. And it's really easy to learn vertical uphill. It's basically just a straight on drag with the torch pointed straight in at 90 degrees or a slight push. Pretty forgiving on the, on the gun angle. You don't want to get way out of whack, but if you aim for 90 degrees, you'll probably be close enough. And again, these are, these are just normal settings, 270 inches of wire feed speed. In a minute, we're going to crank that up to 500 inches a minute. You see the travel speeds, even though it's faster than 7018, it's, it's still fairly slow. And, and your stick out and all that is still important and everything, but it's pretty forgiving. Using 7525 or C25 shielding gas here, 045 diameter wire. You can see that is punching in that corner big time. Oh yeah. 
All right, so now let's take a look at the 7018 one at 115 amps and the ARC force set to 33%. Like I said, I, I experimented a little bit off camera, lowering the ARC force down to 10% and even zero. And there is a difference. I think that when you're welding manually, you tend to compensate for any differences, and the weld winds up looking very similar. But it did seem to be so a softer, smoother arc at the lower the uh, arc control settings. So the second pass, I'm just holding these toes for just a count, trying to avoid any undercut, trying to progress forward at an even rate, and uh, realizing that I really need practice on this. But we're going to look at some restarts here. And the restarts set at 30% uh, on the hot start yielded like an increase of about 30 or 40 extra amps for about a half a second, maybe not very long at all. And so, you know, at first I set the hot start to 50% and looked at the panel and when I would start, it, it, it put out 170 amps for just a minute and that seemed a little bit too much. But a restart, basically you start ahead and you want to weld over top of any arcs and slag and anything you deposited. But if you got the machine set pretty hot, it's no trouble melting through all that stuff and reconsuming it. And you don't want any arc strikes outside of the welding zone. You want to weld right over top of any arc strike you might make. So that's a skill all in itself. And students, you need to get into the habit of doing that. All right, so I made so many restarts on that that it was a lot uglier than it needed to be. But... I think it made a better video showing restarts time and time again. All right, now we're going to increase this thing. 25.2 volts, 500 inches a minute wire feed, 045 wire. That's, I mean, not quite twice the wire feed speed, but almost. And you just would have a hard time doing that with short circuit MIG hardwire going uphill. And you can see an increase in travel speed right away. JD's trying to keep that gun pretty much dead nuts, 90 degrees in there. Might have a slight push, might have a slight drag. It's hard to tell with the camera, but the travel speed is definitely much faster. And so I'm just going to let this run till the very end. And actually, you can't weld the whole joint out the way we got it chucked up in the stand there. And by the way, thanks to Triangle Engineering for you know providing this stand for me a few years ago. It really helps on doing filming like this. So with this, just the slightest side-to-side -side motion, you don't even have to do that, but sometimes it helps to see where you're going, and it helps even things out. It helps flatten out a little bit if you do just a very slight manipulation, but you don't have to. You can just poke it right in the middle and run right uphill. So uh, timing this took just a little bit over one minute to go 14 inches. So that's half the time that it took at 270 inches a minute, give or take. So those are two things that are cool about dual shield flux core is, is the ability to not manipulate the gun going vertical uphill and also you've got a huge range of wire feed speed settings. All right, so fast travel speed is only good if you get adequate penetration. So we're going to do a cut and etch now and check that out. So we cut a cross section using the dry cut saw with the carbide tip blade and then a sanding disc at about 80 grit and now this is a blue scotch bright pad and there's all kinds of different ways you can polish but I'll say this the better the polish the better the etch result you don't have to have a perfect polish on there but it really does make it etch a lot quicker if you do I'm using a solution that was designed for heat tent removal of stainless steels here so it's got a little bit of nitric acid in it and this what you're looking at here both of these are 7018 stick welds uphill the one on the right is the two-pass weld you saw. The one on the left is a multi-pass stringer weld. Now both of these welds seem to get into the root okay. Adequate penetration. They got some convexity on them definitely, but even though they were slow, they got in there. Let's look at the dual shield now. Okay, so the one on the left here is the high wire feed speed weld. And the one on the right that's slightly more con convex is the one with the 270 inches a minute. So that was a much slower travel speed, and I think that accounts for the extra build up there. It's got a slightly larger heat affected zone, but it just goes to show you the effect that travel speed can have. In fact, travel speed has probably got more effect than any other variable on heat input, and so it all be, it affects penetration, it affects bead profile, it affects all kinds of things. So, all right, let's take a look at this thing. 
Now, when you're doing a cut etch, you don't want to see any dot, anything that would indicate lack of fusion in the root of the joint. But sometimes you'll you'll see one, and, and you'll think it's lack of fusion, when if you draw lines like this of where the pieces actually inter intersect, sometimes that what appear to be lack of fusion is just something like a rounded edge or whatever that's behind where the root would be. So, anyway, thanks for watching. And if you like this kind of thing, make sure to subscribe to the videos. We'll see you next time.